So up next, we have Subrata Ashe. He is a principal MTS at Salesforce, specializing in performance at internet scale. Subrata will be speaking on the optimizations his team did at Salesforce for Einstein Analytics Cassandra deployment in the public cloud. If you want to know how to use Cassandra for cloud native architecture, I suspect Salesforce might know a little something about that. So you might want to pay attention to what he's going to say here. Uh, with that, here is Subrata. Thank you, Melissa. Hi, I am Subrata Ashe. Uh, I am a principal software engineer at Salesforce, focusing on performance of distributed systems. I've been implementing and optimizing Cassandra for nearly eight years now. Uh, in this lightning talk, uh, I will be giving a quick walkthrough on the major optimizations that we did in Cassandra to make it performant and uh, in our journey towards uh, cloud native architecture. Uh, basically, making Cassandra work in Kubernetes container with strict encryption and able to easily port to any uh, cloud provider. Uh, in the agenda for today, I will uh, briefly touch upon our Tableau CRM analytics use case, uh, the major performance goals that we had, and the key optimizations that we did. There were a ton of optimizations, but in the interest of the time, I would be focusing on certain key major areas where it actually helped us in optimizing the cost to serve. Uh, these optimizations would be specific to cloud native workload with a special focus on cost to serve. However, these can be generalized for data center deployments as well. So over to what's uh, the Tableau CRM that I was talking about. So Tableau CRM is formerly known as Einstein Analytics, is the analytics product that empowers Salesforce CRM users with AI-driven analytics. We use Cassandra as a primary metadata store in our distributed system stack, serving multi-tenancy. Our Cassandra workload consists of deterministic writes in terms of scheduled batch jobs, and random reads, uh, which are real-time query calls to fetch metadata. In terms of deployment, we are cloud native with uh, three availability zones and root traffic using Cassandra containers and encryption. Uh, due to our complex implementation of Cassandra, both in terms of containerization and encryption, we set the performance and reliability goals to follow our existing data center deployment. We wanted to make Cassandra faster than our existing already performant physical data center deployment. We set an optimistic P95 read write latency of less than two milliseconds to ensure that it is in parity with existing cluster in terms of transaction throughput and peak smoothness. Our availability goal was also to achieve five nines. As part of the performance initiative, we analyzed our workload and performed benchmark tests with encrypted containers. Since we already had an existing performant Cassandra running in production, we used the same configuration for our cloud deployment. However, due to the earlier complexities, we soon hit bottlenecks in terms of read and write. We invested analyzing the areas where we can optimize and reduce the cost to serve. We wanted to achieve higher IOPS with latencies and better cost to serve. Now, if you look into this hotspot that we have for write, uh, we analyze the workload and benchmark test with encrypted containers. And this hotspot actually provided us a gold mine, which pointed us to underperforming code path in flushing write buffers to disk, which was slowing down the reads. Uh, more than that, it also increased the memory used by dirty buffers in page cache and a long running writes workload showed initial signs of out of memory. Uh, with the root causes known, now we know that there has been some issues there. We separated the commit logs and SS table storage in two separate SSD volumes uh, that enabled us a guaranteed IOPS and a network bandwidth between the two volumes. We also changed the disk optimization strategy to SSDs and it came as a default option. Uh, based on our findings from the hotspot, we also enabled trickle F-sync to true so that dirty buffers are flushed at regular intervals. After tuning the IOPS and the latency bottlenecks, we looked into ways to reduce the network bandwidth usage as well, which is also a driver for our cost to serve. Uh, reiterating on our design pattern, we run in three availability zones and our workload is highly variable in terms of read and writes. And uh, what we did, we experimented with different Cassandra configurations and found out which algorithm and pattern would be optimal. Based on that, we enabled internode, commit log and hint compression and also set LZ4 as our compression algorithm. All of these optimizations that I talked about, and there are many much more, 
which could not be covered here, uh, helped us successfully launch our cloud native Cassandra implementation. And it's now part of the Salesforce Hyperforce platform. This would not be possible without the support of the entire community. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank Jeremy, who was my partner in crime, as well as my advisor, whose guidance has been immensely valuable in this journey. Uh, if you would like to know more about cloud native architecture deployments for Cassandra, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Thank you. Well, so, um, thanks so much, Subrata. I love uh, these journeys that people take um, where, you know, they adopt a system, learn more about it, optimize it. Uh, and, and it really gets down almost to uh, getting Cassandra to behave, uh, you know, with the environment that you choose, right? I really, really love this concept of mechanical sympathy. And I, I think this talk just so well highlights it. So thanks so much, Subrata. It was such an awesome journey. I love seeing that. Uh, and also some great takeaways uh, for the folks uh, who are watching from home.